Well, good afternoon and welcome to uh, our meeting today on the Sixth Street Viaduct Park and Proposition 68. Uh, today is Monday, February 8th, 2021. And this is a meeting hosted by the Department of Recreation and Parks with the uh, Bureau of Engineering in partnership with uh, the Office of Council Member Kevin DeLeon. And tonight we also welcome the Boyle Heights Neighborhood Council and our partners at Cedar sinai for this meeting. Now today's meeting is being uh, live streamed both on our Zoom as platform as well as on Facebook Live. And you can you see the links here after the conclusion of this meeting, we will upload the meeting um, onto our YouTube page. And to go over some of the meeting guidelines with you tonight, uh, first thing we'd like to do um, is for you to sign in. So Yumi has a link in the chat box and that link will take you to our sign-in uh, sheet. And this sign-in sheet is very critical. It'll keep track of you know, attendance, which is very important for the grant application. Later, we will actually today we will have we will have uh, two questions and answer sections. We'll have uh, an answer section after the Cedar Sinai presentation, as well as one that will follow uh, the main Proposition 68 project overview. Now, at any time during the uh, presentation, if you have any questions or comments, uh, please feel free to leave them in the chat box. Now, at the end of the meeting, we will also provide you with a link to a survey. Uh, this is an audience survey that will let us know how we're doing. And we also wanna also let you comment on any aspect of the uh, project. So as you can see from the scheduled meetings, this is our sixth and final meeting. Uh, we had five uh, previous ones um, starting back at, uh, on January 20th. And we had one on the 23rd, on the 26th of January, the 28th. And our last meeting was on February 2nd, last week. During those meetings, we covered a wide array of topics. We looked at you know, the, the, um, the arts district side of the park and the rest was concentrated and focused on the, the Boyle Heights side. So tonight's meeting um, is about giving you an overview of the east side, the Boyle Heights side. And we'll have a general discussion of the, you know, the many aspects that we have covered um, during our last five meetings. And we will be doing so uh, in partnership with the Boyle Heights Neighborhood Council. So I'd like to introduce you to tonight's uh, panelists. Uh, we have Nate Hayward, the Capital Project Director from the Office of Council Member Kevin DeLeon. We have uh, Laurel Barash, uh, a research advisor from the Cancer Research Center for Health Equity at uh, Cedar sinai From the city of LA and the Bureau of Engineering, we have uh, Gary Lamb, a senior civil engineer. From Department of Recreation and Parks, uh, we have Daryl Ford from our Planning, Construction and Maintenance branch. We also have Craig Rains from the Planning, Construction and Maintenance branch. From our grants administration team, we have Bill Jones, our chief management analyst. Uh, I'm Stephen Tran, a senior management analyst. And we have Yumi Songen, a management assistant. And trans translating for us today um, into Spanish is Jorge Rodas from Barbier International. So in today's meeting agenda, we'll have uh, some opening remarks and then we'll go you know, to our Cedar sinai presentation with Laurel. And then I will give you an overview of Proposition 68, third round results, as well as um, some general guidelines. And then we'll, I'll hand it over to Gary Lamb of the Bureau of Engineering, and who will go over the, uh, the park um, project with you. And then we'll conclude it with questions and answers and a survey. So the first thing I'd like to do is uh, hand this over to Nate Hayward from the Office of Council Member Kevin DeLeon for an opening remark. Nate. 
Thank you so much, Stephen, and thank you all so much for coming tonight. We're very, very excited to have the sixth and final community meeting um, this year for the city's Proposition 68 application for the Sixth Street uh, Park. Um, there's not many times in our built environment in Los Angeles that we get the opportunity to add um, literally 12 acres of open space to areas that you know are surrounded by train tracks and wires and freeways. And this project really represents an opportunity to provide the community um, the various features and amenities that they don't have. Um, we've really seen this process as an opportunity to uh, sort of re rediscover what we've heard from the public in the past about the desires for improvements at the park, uh, such as a new soccer field and you know, fitness equipment and other things uh, that people have asked for. But we've also seen this as an opportunity to engage you all about some elements there hasn't been as much dialogue on. Uh, for example, um, you know, the public art components, which is an ongoing conversation, as well as things such as um, the areas uh, between Clarence and Anderson and, um, and the splash pads. Um, we really think that this, this project presents that opportunity for the community to really own and have this park be their park. So we really ask you tonight to please listen to the presentations, ask questions, and we hope to have a great dialogue with you all about uh, about the project. Um, this is an ongoing dialogue. This is not the final final point in the conversation. Um, so please um, sit back and ask questions. Um, before I turn it back over to the city family, I'd like to um, really wanna welcome uh, Jose from the Boyle Heights Neighborhood Council. We're very, very lucky in Boyle Heights. I mean, very lucky that we have an engaged neighborhood council who is invested in taking a hands-on approach to making improvements in Boyle Heights. Um, so they were very gracious enough to host a special meeting for us specifically to discuss this project. Um, so I wanna turn it over to Jose to make some, um, make some comments. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Nate. Hi, uh, everybody. My name is uh, Jose Orozco Pelico. I am the current president for the Bull Heights Neighborhood Council. Uh, you know, uh, the Bull Heights Neighborhood Council has worked uh, with Nate and also uh, several departments for this uh, project, and, and uh, we've uh, we've been glad to also have a, a engagement here in Bowl Heights in the past with this project, and uh, really getting the sense for for the neighborhood and the residents and stakeholders, and taking that feedback from the residents and stakeholders because this this project is going to be for the future generations. So I, I really applaud Nate. Uh, thank you very much, everybody in City 14, Michelle as well. Uh, and everybody in, in engineering and the city of LA uh, for, for definitely holding these meetings and letting the, the voice of the community be heard and listened. So thank you, Nate. Thank you, Nate, and thank you, Jose, for your opening remark. So tonight I'd like to introduce you to um, Laurel Barash from Cedar sinai who's gonna give you a presentation on her research and her organization research on how park usage impacts uh, health and why is it good to have more you know, park space in a community. And before I do that, I just wanna give you um, an int introduction um, on Laurel. So uh, Laurel is a public health professional um, with expertise in health disparity research. She has um, a master's of public health from the Graduate School of Public Health at San Diego State University and a Bachelor's of Arts in Social Ecology from UC Irvine. Now, Laurel is currently the research advisor at the Cancer Research Center for Health Equity at uh, Cedar sinai And her work you know, basically is here to address uh, cancer incidents, mortality, and high-risk high behaviors in under-resourced neighborhoods in Los Angeles County. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and allow Laurel to share her screen so she can provide you with the presentation. Okay, can you see this? Yes. Okay, great. Um, thank you so much for the introduction. And I think that, um, 
you know, Nate and Jose did a great job of starting to scratch the surface about, you know, why these spaces are so important in our communities. So I hope today or tonight to just speak briefly a little bit about uh, the connection between parks and health and also what research tells us about that connection. And then an example of what we are doing at Cedar sinai uh, to uh, address this. So the evidence is becoming really well known that uh, parks are a space you know, for a lot of different um, activities and they serve a lot of different purposes. Uh, they can be a place that help foster mental, physical, spiritual health, a place that can really advance health equity and help kids flourish through different programming. Um, and they're also a place that can actually serve as a prescription to combat chronic diseases um, like cancer and diabetes. Um, and they're also a place that encourage physical activity. So I would like to just... Um, hone in on that for a moment and um, talk about physical activity. So what we know is that uh, being physically inactive is uh, and continues to be a significant public health concern and rates of obesity and overweight are rising and continuing to rise, and especially among our, our adolescent and youth. And this is alarming because of all of the negative outcomes that come along um, with, with uh, being overweight and obese with things like cardiovascular disease, type two diabetes, asthma, and several cancers. So unfortunately, these, these disparities are even worse among young girls and different racial and ethnic minority groups. So if we look a little bit to the benefits of physical activity and particularly on cancer risk, since that is uh, where we focus most of our work um, at the center I work at, uh, we know that if you're more physically active, you actually decrease the risk of several cancers, uh, even if you have uh, a history of smoking or obesity. And if you're a cancer survivor, uh, if you're physically active, you will live longer and have uh, less, uh, you're more likely to live longer and have less adverse side effects than those, are, uh, than those who are inactive. So what does research tell us about parks and park design and physical activity? So a colleague, Deb Cohen at Kaiser Foundation has spent the last decade uh, with colleagues using this framework called So Park, where basically they go into different neighborhoods and parks and they observe. They look at uh, who's using the park, what are they doing, um, where are the disparities, and also what are the popular features in different parks and in different types of neighborhoods. So when we look at disparities, uh, they were able to show that um, parks are more used by males than females, they're the most used by children and the least by seniors. Um, and that's a particular issue because seniors represent 18% of the population, but only 4% uh, of the park population. Parks are used less in lower income neighborhoods, uh, even if they have similar facilities. And of course, fear of crime is a real barrier to, uh, to folks and to park users. So what accounts for increased park usage? We know that um, bigger park spaces, more green spaces, uh, increase park usage. Places where there, it's more populated, more people are using the park, then increases park usage. Uh, it, areas, um, if you're able to sort of have a holistic approach to poverty and, and disparities in a neighborhood and you're able to um, improve those different factors, that increases park usage. Also facilities, supervised activities like programs and also on-site marketing. So when we see parks and spaces that have a brand and an identity and banners and really the you can see the pride uh, from the, the park that also increases park usage. 
Parks with good walking loops uh, also increase usage and they encourage people to be more physically active, particularly among seniors. Uh, parks without loops uh, are more than twice as likely to be empty or they were during uh, the observation periods of this study. So when we look at playground elements and playground use, there's actually evidence that shows us uh, the more that you invest in some of these play structures, um, the more usage you'll get out of a park and particularly among youth. So you can see here that with each additional element type, park usage increases. And if you have things like crawling tubes, spinners, splash pads, all of that, it really does make an impact in a park space. So here are just a couple of photos of, of parks in the community that have nice you know, play spaces, open spaces. So lastly, Deb and her colleagues looked at fitness zones that increase park usage. And uh, we know that fitness zones are used throughout the day, but uh, we, it depends on the time of day that people are using them in which encourages people to be more physically active. It also depends on their placement. Um, when they're clustered together, there tends to be less vandalism. People feel safer in accessing those spaces. So now I'll just walk you briefly through an initiative that we have at Cedar sinai to help improve the connection between parks and health in Los Angeles. So before I go into the specifics, I wanted to just take a moment and zoom out to the high level and talk about the framework that we're using for our project. And we're using a framework from the World Health Organization that uh, it's called the Global Action Framework on Physical Activity. And what it tells us is that it, it's really a multi-sector, multi-level effort uh, to increase physical activity. It's not going to be one thing, um, but it's going to be several different groups working together. And it's usually difficult to marshal such resources. But what, uh, what we know is that parks really serve at the center of these four areas. Um, parks are places where, um, you know, they're, they're active societies, environments, you get active people and also active systems. And so um, there's just a really amazing opportunity here with this funding and this grant that um, you're going after to actually uh, have an impact here. So our project at Cedar sinai is called Shine LA. It's a 10 year research initiative that is linking with the 2028 Olympic and Paralympic movements that are coming to our city. It's a partnership, a very close partnership with the city of LA, Department of Rec and Parks, also Stanford and Art Center, Discovery Cube and Garmin. So our, we worked with Art Center students to help design some imagery that was inclusive. And here's an example of just a mock-up of when the intervention is um, eventually deployed around the city, the type of materials you, you might see. So the goal here with this initiative is ultimately at the end to be able to answer important questions like how can we promote physical activity in ethnically and racially diverse boys and girls of all abilities? And how can we harness the power of community to improve uh, kids' physical activity and mental health? And then how can we sustain these changes beyond the Olympics? So this is a four phase uh, initiative. We're currently in phase one. Uh, eventually, uh, the goal is that as lessons are learned, um, we design new interventions, learn more lessons, and then eventually in phase three, uh, which is the year before the Olympics, we will deliver a multi-level intervention in approximately 100,000 um, children and adults across diverse communities in Los Angeles. So phase one is where we currently are. 
we, before COVID, we were in the parks. We did a little pilot. We were in seven locations across Los Angeles. Um, Boyle Heights was not one of them, but we were in the neighboring community of Lincoln Heights among several others. And we were talking to uh, the staff. So the directors, the coordinators, and we were trying to understand, you know, how different communities use spaces. What is working? What isn't? Where are the gaps? And the next phase of that was to then go out even further uh, into the community, to schools, to neighborhood councils, advisory boards, uh, police departments, to then do more interviews to continue to listen and gather information. So some of the initial interview findings that we that we were able to gather were that people do really want an emphasis on getting more girls in sport. And, um, you know, it's easy to say that it's it's complex and will marshal uh, a lot of resources, um, but it's something that should be a priority. Uh, also, there needs to be a holistic approach, uh, especially in lower income communities when thinking about parks and recognizing that these are spaces that often provide uh, food or childcare, um, different uh, types of community. And so we really have to be holistic in our approach um, and, and sensitive in a lot of these areas. Also good quality programming, um, we heard that over and over again that people want to feel like the soccer program is going to be really strong and not compete with um, school sports. Also uh, harness youth culture and people want to really um, tap into what kids are, are doing in a normal day-to-day -day basis. And then of course promoting safety in parks. And I know that the city is working really hard to address a lot of these issues but there's more work that can be done. So lastly, uh, as I mentioned, the, the way that change will um, be made is really through partnerships, multi-levels, multi-sectors, and that's again uh, with local schools, businesses, police, community groups, uh, and then even if you know there's the opportunity to partner with LA-based sports organizations and think outside of the box in that regard. So where we are today, listening to communities, identifying challenges, identifying common goals, and ultimately designing a menu of, of behavioral interventions to ultimately improve physical and mental health among Angelenos. And that's you know, building upon the momentum of the Olympics. So in conclusion, I hope I was able to tell you a little bit about what community-informed research tells us about well-designed parks and how there's spaces for people to not only have fun, but also find mental, physical, spiritual, and social connection. And again, I think it's an incredible opportunity with these Proposition 68 funds uh, that can expand and renovate the park in your community and directly improve lives. And so kudos to everyone for um, being involved in this uh, initiative. Thank you. Happy Thank to you, Laurel. And uh, at this time, we'd like to uh, take any questions that anybody may have or comments on um, the presentation from Laurel. I'll, I'll wait about a minute or so. Okay, I don't see any questions at this time, but you know, feel free to ask um, any questions. And if um, if Laurel's in, in, can't get to your questions today, um, I'll make sure that I'll submit her the questions. Thank you very much, Laurel. Thank you. So, the the reason why we have these meetings is because we want to inform you of this Proposition 68 funding opportunity. This is the final round of this funding opportunity. Uh, Recreation and Parks will submit a Proposition 68 grant application. 
we will, so we are here to present this park project. Um, so you can, you know, a, a review, so you can assess and you can provide us feedback. And of course, this is about engaging the community on this park project development. Now, what have we heard from, you know, the previous five meetings? Actually, lots of things. Um, in terms of, you know, the arts and cultural, you've told us about your interest in, you know, several cultures such as Tongva, history of the area, you know, contemporary events. Uh, there was also a lot of feedback on public art. You know, you said you wanted, you know, murals, mosaics, structures and amenities, you know, that uh, enable local artists to decorate. Another important aspect was the equitable use of the park and uh, someone had requested a formal steering committee. We've also heard, you know, uh, desires for spaces with lighting and sound capabilities, uh, as well as solar power, as well as a central pit, uh, fire pit area. So these, these are some of the, uh, you know, feedback that we have received uh, throughout these meeting series. Now, to give you an overview of Proposition 68, the main objective of Proposition 68 is to create new parks and new recreation opportunities in critically underserved communities. Um, on June 5th, 2018, the voters of California approved uh, Prop 68 by 57%. And we are you know, in the fourth and final round of Proposition 68. And this final round is worth $395 million. So that is the total amount of money that um, all the agencies and um, you know, grant seekers are essentially seeking for. And uh, this is a competitive grant, so we're not guaranteed funding. Uh, we are gonna try our best. We feel that this is an excellent project for you know, funding. Um, the maximum grant request is eight and a half million. And we have a deadline of March 12th of 2021 to submit this application. And should we be successful in this um, application and should the state award us um, a grant agreement, uh, this project would have to be complete by March of 2025. So to go over some of the you know, round three results, in the third round, the state received 478 applications for a total request of $2.3 billion. And all the requests were competing for about $255 million of available funding. The average grant uh, request, meaning the average grant application was asking for $4.8 million and the average grant award was 4.1 million. Now, out of the 478 applications that the state received, uh, the state awarded uh, 62 grant awards. Now, out of the 62 awarded grants, uh, 28 were for um, new parks, 14 were for expansions of existing parks, and 20 were for renovations of existing parks. So the Sixth Street um, uh, Bridge Park would be considered a brand new park which is the top priority for the state. And to, get, to give you an idea of what eligible projects um, need to have, first of all, they need to create one recreation feature. And as um, you know, Gary will let you know, we have many, many features uh, in this project. In addition to that, um, this application would have to meet you know, either one of these two criteria. The area, you know, uh, the one half mile area around the project site has to have three acres or less of parkland for 1,000 people, or, and also and, um, less than $56,982 in terms of household median income. Now in this case, the community surrounding the Sixth Street uh, via the park actually qualify under both criteria because it has 0 0.32 acres per 1,000 people, which is well less than three acres. And the median household income is 54,325, which is less than the threshold of, of 56,982. So 
this application would qualify under both criteria. So at this time, I'd like to um, uh, welcome Gary Lamb from the Bureau of Engineering. He's a civil service engineer and the project manager for this project. And he's gonna give you an overview of the park project. Gary? Hi, thank you, Stephen. And good evening, everybody. Um, welcome to our meeting tonight. And I wanna thank you for making time out of your busy schedules to attend. All right, so what I'm gonna do in my presentation here is go over the art project in terms of how we got to this point of the current design, uh, what we've shown you at a previous uh, five meeting, and also um, basically get your input for what we wanna see as part of this, of this Prop 68 grant scope here, all right? But before I do that, there's a much larger project right above the part project. Um, and as many of the residents living in the Boyle Heights area knows, it's the Sixth Street Viaduct project that's presently in, in construction now. So I wanna go, just go give you a very brief overview of where we are of the Viaduct project first. Okay, so the project is 60% completed construction. Uh, right now, um, if you pass over it, you'll see the nice arches being formed. And by summer of 2022, the city anticipates completing the divided project, at which point we hope to also start construction of the park project immediately after the viaducts completed. The park project right now is in design and um, we're gonna hopefully finish our environmental and design documents this year. And if we're so lucky to get this grant, implement all the ideas or some of the ideas or as much as we could from, from your input into um, the Prop 68 funding here. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so how is the part project being funded now? What's our current funding situation? So this slide basically shows you the list of funds that we have available right now. Uh, we have City Mikla funds, which is the Municipal Improvement Corporation of LA. Uh, another source of funds is the Prop K funding, and that's a scope specific fund. So we can only use that towards the sports field lighting and the paths, uh, the lighting for the paths leading to the sports field area. Next we have, um, the excess bond proceeds funding from the former CRA LA. This funding is to be used on the east side, the Boyle Heights side. We also have the transfer of floor area rights funding. And we also have two private grants. The first is the Metropolis grant, which is for the soccer field. And the next grant is the Leonard Hill Charitable Trust or the Leonard Hill grant. That's for the Leonard Hill Arts Plaza on the west side. Uh, Next, please. Okay, so how did we get to our current park design? So back in 2017, we held a total of six large community meetings, both sides of the river, the Boyle Heights side and also the, the, the Arts District side. And we solicited feedback uh, via online surveys, physical surveys, um, also surveys that we received at the meeting. And we collected all these survey results and tabulated them into various categories. And as you can see here, in these color categories, certain categories that we were looking at or focusing on, uh, basically gauging the community's input on health and well wellness, what types of sports and games people want to see, for example, uh, what types of arts, culture, culture and entertainment um, items that they want to have and so forth. Okay, so we collected all these surveys and we tabulated the top three priorities in each of these categories. The next slide, please. And so here you see what the top three uh, items were from the various categories. So for example, if we look at sports, games, and play, uh, uh, majority of, uh, of voters uh, wanted to see like soccer, and the second was the dog part, and third was the playground equipment. And these are things that we're actually implementing in the current design here. Now, if we go to the arts and culture and recreation side uh, here, you see music, movies, performance spaces. And again, all these elements are going to be uh, 
part of the part project as, as I'll show you in a little bit. Okay. All right, next slide, please. All right, so with our Prop 68 um, grant that we're trying to go after here, well, what can we qualify ter in terms of scopes of work? Uh, so here's a listing of uh, the park elements that we're trying to get grant for. So the first one here is the skate park, and we've, we've had a community meeting uh, two weeks ago on the skate park, um, general landscaping, uh, funding for the basketball and volleyball court areas, barbecue and picnic areas, uh, restrooms. Uh, we plan to have restrooms on both sides of the, of the park, general lighting, uh, outdoor fitness equipment, and I'll show you where those are. Uh, we've talked about the playground at one of our meetings. Uh, we talked about um, public art, arts and cultural elements. Um, the next would be a splash pad, which we've also looked at. Uh, the grant fund can go towards the synthetic soccer field, walking paths, and various performance and flex play lawn areas. Next slide, please. All right, so uh, from those six large meetings, our designer uh, put together uh, a concept for the part that uh, both the east and west side voted on. And this is the canopies and objects framework that the uh, designer uh, Hargraves uh, came up with. So you, you see a lot of ovals and like circular paths, basically mirroring the arches and spans uh, of the bridge above. All right, so that's what you see. And then the, the, the park, as Nate mentioned, is the total of 12 acres. The largest portion of the park is around seven, seven and a half acres. And that's the east part, the Boyle Heights site there. So the Boyle Heights site has the larger share of the park here. All right, the, the park split up into four distinct areas. The west park on the left, then the arts plaza, and then the River Gateway. The River Gateway is basically the, the, the existing Sixth Street tunnel area that we're gonna improve. And then finally, the, the East part there on the Boyle Heights side. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in and show you guys the various features in the park here. Uh, next slide, please. All right, so I'm gonna go from uh, west to east here. I, I know this meeting's gonna be focused on the east side, but I'm gonna go ahead and present the park in its entirety. Um, does the west, side of the park. Um, what's cut off here on the left of the slide that we, we can't see here is, is the entry to the park. That's on Mateo Street from the, from the Arts District side. And on this side of the park here is where the pedestrian ramp comes down. So it's a little hilly in this area where the, where the ramp comes down from the bridge. And there isn't too much we can do in this area. Uh, we, we put in picnic tables, general landscape areas, as well as a, a dog park there, just west of Santa Fe there in that uh, kind of uh, brownish orange uh, oval shape. And then immediately below there, that yellow uh, rectangle there is where we have our uh, cafe building area, as well as our public restroom, okay? Now, as I cross the street eastward from Santa Fe Avenue between Santa Fe and, and the railroad tracks there, uh, this is the Arts Plaza area. This is the Leonard Hill, uh, Arts Plaza, that, that's where that funding is going, the specific funding. And this is where uh, we're gonna have a stage and performance plaza area there. So you see there's a, a stage there and just, uh, and just south of there are the terraced uh, seating areas for um, spectators to observe the uh, various performances or cultural activities there. Okay, all right. So let's go ahead and go uh, to the next uh, slide here. So this is the uh, landscape architect's rendering showing the uh, performance area at the Leonard Hill Arts Plaza. Okay, and you can see on the right-hand side, there is the uh, uh, terraced seating area that I'm talking about. And the stage is of course, uh, right there in the middle. Uh, next slide, please. All right, so now we uh, go into the east part. That's like I said, there's the bulk of the uh, park and this is really where the active recreation is gonna take place. All right, so I'm gonna go from left to right. All right, so um, on the left side here between the railroad tracks and Mission Road here, um, this is our planned area for the future skate park. 
Now the park funding as it pre presently stands does not include the skate park. However, we are reserving that area for the future skate park. So as part of the Prop 68 uh, funding scope, we're hoping to uh, apply that grant towards this, uh, towards the implementation of the skate park. Okay, so that's what we see there uh, in that area. And the skate park is approximately 8,000 square feet or so, plus or minus, okay? Now, as we make our way east between Mission and Anderson Street, this is really the bulk of the active play area, the active recreation area. And as you can see here in the dark green, we've got our U8 and U10 synthetic soccer field, all right? And just southwest of there, we have a quieter rain garden, meadow uh, area, some general landscaping. And then um, to the east of the synthetic soccer field is our first of two performance flexible fields. So this is a multi-purpose field that can be used for uh, active play, for soccer, uh, or it could be used for various cultural and social events like, like a summer movie night, for example. All right, so this is a flexible field, we call it. And then, uh, as we move eastward here, we have the children's play area and the splash pad. And we focused uh, on, on this at one of our meetings. And then uh, north of there and that uh, other oval shape, kind of kind of like the uh, brownish oval shape, there's our basketball and volleyball court area. All right, so working within this area here, uh, you see the two gray colored like oval egg shaped structures there. That's our um, Reckon Park's uh, staff building, as well as our uh, East Park uh, public restroom here, okay? All right, so as we make our way between Anderson and Clarence Street, uh, this is our oval space area where we have picnic tables, um, a lot of benches, uh, general landscaping, more rain gardens, as well as the adult fitness equipment. And, and we also talked about what the community want to see in these over one of our previous community meetings that one of our, uh, I think it was within the last two weeks here. And then south of there, we have our second performance flex field area. So again, this is our general area where people can use it for active recreation, such as soccer or various social and cultural events as well. So finally, rounding out the easternmost area of the park between Clarence Street and the 101 freeway, this is our uh, dog park area for the east side. So um, we're, we just so solely have a dog. This, this basically rounds out the general scope of the park as we present community meetings. Uh, next slide, please. So the next two or three slides, I'm going to show to show you um, zooming in to the various renderings um, from our landscape architect. So this first one here is a rendering showing the synthetic soccer field, and you can see in the foreground there, and a little bit in the background, we have some seating areas for spectators to watch the soccer field or to watch a soccer play. Um, and also we have sports field lighting for, um, for uh, use of the field during the nighttime. And then you can see just to the right of there, we have our um, walking jogging path area, okay? That's along the perimeter of the park. And then the viaduct basically is right above the park. The park is a linear uh, part that follows the, the outline of the, of the bridge right above. And you can see the uh, bridge above us in this uh, rendering here. Next slide, please. All right, so this is a rendering just showing the, the oval spaces, which we concentrated on on one of our community meetings. And this uh, oval space area here, you can see it's a lot of landscaping. Uh, uh, we've got the grilling uh, and picnic areas here as, well as the adult fitness equipment. This, this area is still flexible of uh, what you guys wanna see. Okay, so we're not married. We do have reserved the space for the uh, picnic tables and, and the uh, adult fitness equipment in this area. Okay, next slide, please. And then this one's sh showing 
that's a concept of the splash pad and the children's playground area. This was presented as well at one of our uh, previous meetings. Uh, next slide, please. All right, so this is our sixth and final meeting as Nate uh, talked about and also as referenced by Stephen. Um, this slide here is basically showing you a, a broad overview of of what we focused on at at least four of, of our six meetings here. Uh, the first meeting, we looked at West Park, the Mesquite area, uh, south of Mesquite rather in that area. At meeting number two, we looked at the skate park and received input on, on that. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Meeting number two, we focused on the Clarence and Anderson Oval areas and get, get got received feedback on what folks wanted to see there. Meeting number three was on the skate park and what folks want to see in terms of skate features and skate elements at the park. Number four looked at the splash pad and playground areas as, uh, all right. And then the last meeting that we had, meeting number five, uh, focused on arts in general and public art. And of course, tonight's meeting is just our general discussion on the East uh, side in general. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, Gary, I just want to let you know that you're fading a, a bit. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. I got microphone closer to me. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah, you're good now. Okay. Next slide, please. All right. So uh, we had five previous meetings. What did we hear at our five previous meetings? Uh, Stephen already went into a little bit of this earlier in the presentation. Um, we looked at public art at our last meeting, uh, focused on discussions on murals, mosaics. Things we heard were things like colored concrete, uh, sculptures and walls that local artists can decorate and some of the arts and culture themes such as the Tonga culture and just having a history of the area. Also at the one of our meetings we looked at having maybe more greenery areas such as more native plants and trees. There was discussion about parking and plants to reduce traffic and also focusing on the various tables and benches, having more drinking fountains. Uh, we also looked at the skate park at one of the meetings. And then of course the adult fitness areas, basically what kind of fitness equipment folks want to look uh, have such as um, cardio, uh, core and strength type equipment. And of course, uh, also focusing on just looking at the walking path and the bike path areas. All right, so um, what we want to get from community members tonight on the east side is uh, with all these topics that we've shown in the previous five meetings, what, what do you guys like the most? What are the best features? What do you guys want to see implemented with our Prop 68 scope uh, if we are so uh, fortunate to get it? So we want to hear from, from you. Uh, Stephen, I'll turn it back to you right now. Thank you, Gary. And we have come to our questions and answers, and I just want to refer back to you know the 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 list of you know of feedback of ideas you know that we have collected from previous meetings, just to, um, as as a reference point for uh, your you know questions and comments. So we'll go to our questions and comments. Um, First one is, will there be healthier food vendors at these parks? Uh, it's a very good question. Uh, Reckon Parks has a concessions group and this group is um, basically responsible for, you know, essentially outreaching and, and engaging uh, food vendors to service our parks. And uh, once this project gets, um, you know, developed, uh, it certainly will be um, an option for us to go. And, and um, when we do our uh, requests for qualifications and requests for proposals to you know, ensure that we select um, you know, vendors that do provide uh, healthy foods for the communities. And please let, let you know, and for future uh, community meetings, let us know about, you know, and that this is an important uh, priority for your community. And Stephen, uh, if I may add, um, uh, we, we do have plans in terms of uh, putting in space in the park for things like a future farmer's market. So there is plenty of landscaped areas or, or areas to, that, feel, that we can hold future uh, farmer's markets in. Great, Th thanks Gary for that. 
Uh, second question is how can seniors and people with disabilities get from Boyle to the East Park safely? So we've had some a number of questions on uh, you know, uh, access and uh, how to address disability. Gary, would you like to um, address this? Sorry, I was muted there. Okay, so, okay, how, okay, how can seniors and people with disabilities get from Boyle to the East Park safely? All right, so um, the park is being developed uh, with ADA, full ADA compliance in mind. Uh, we, there's a number of, um, of, um, of, of walking paths uh, along the park, which will be fully ADA compliant. And then also from the viaduct above on the Boyle Heights site, at least from the viaduct, there's a helical ramp that comes down and, and goes into the park uh, next to Mission Road there. And Stephen, if we, if we can go back to the uh, East Park slide, I wanna show the folks uh, some, some of the various sure. uh, pathways here. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right. Uh, feel more bad. Yep, this one, this one's good. All right, so that um, helical ramp area that I'm talking about is just west of Mission Road right there. And the folks who are from the Boyle Heights side who are up on the viaduct, for example, who want to come, come up or go down, uh, there's, a, there's an ADA compliant ramp that comes down and um, allows people to enter and exit the park there. Um, and then, of course, throughout the park, uh, all our pathways will be ADA compliant. Thank you, Gary. Now, will there be police, uh, security, walking, riding bicycles 24-7? Um, I can address one part of your, your question. Uh, which is, will the grant uh, essentially fund those activities? The answer, um, unfortunately, is no. Uh, the grant is a capital projects grant, and it will only fund uh, basically fixed assets, you know, so, you know, basically lighting and all the features that we've talked to, uh, about so far. Um, and Gary, I, I don't know if you can address the uh, remaining parts of the question. Well, I... It's I can't speak for Reckon Parks, but, but what I do know is that uh, the city does have uh, park rangers that will patrol the parks and um, the park will have uh, certain uh, operating hours as well. Um, I'm not sure if anyone else from uh, Reckon Parks can chime in on, on general safety here and policing. Hey Gary, this is Daryl. I'll, I'll just chime in briefly, just to uh, just to sort of reiterate what you just said, which is um, that it would be a regular park with park hours. Um, obviously, the um, patrolling of the park, um, response to issues of the park, would be um, an LAPD function, so that'll be part of it. I think the question was about whether that be twenty four seven bicycle uh, security in the park. Um, but again, th this is about uh, the grant application. But but uh, like any other city park it would have uh, responses from LAPD to any issues in the park uh, that would go on there. Thank you, Daryl. And uh, another question is, uh, will the ADA going from the bottom of the park all the way up to Boyle Avenue not be stressful for those on walkers and wheelchairs as it appears to be a high incline? Um, the where uh, the, the, the ramp is actually very long. Um, and that helical ramp, um, I don't remember, I don't, I don't recall what the ADA uh, percent is uh, for, for slopes, but it shouldn't be that steep at all. So we're complying fully with the ADA uh, requirements for, for slopes. So what you see in terms of uh, slopes in our sidewalks and, and streets isn't going to be much different for this uh, helical ramp as well. It's very gentle. Thanks, Gary. Uh, another common question is, um, the salvaged arch seems out of place next to a basketball court. Uh, has there been thought about implementing this feature into a more prominent area, such as part of a garden? 
the demolition of the bridge was a great loss, and it would be more appropriate that this arch gets a, a place of honor. Will there, and also, will there be an uh, EV charging station or stations? Um, so this is Nate, I can talk a little bit about both those. So in regards to the arch aspect of it, um, so one thing that was critical was preserving at least uh, one of the metal arches because obviously of how much of an important uh, symbol it is, uh, particularly for the community of Boyle Heights. So there are a couple options with the arches. Um, the city is constructing a new roundabout at Mission and Jesse and is looking at integrating um, a piece of the arch um, or arches or however you want to describe it into, into the a public art element in the roundabout. Um, you know, that's one element that's being looked at. Um, obviously there's many different ways to, to um, incorporate it depending on what you want to do. So the arch had to be cut up in order to move it, right? Because it was so big, but they can weld it back together very easily. Uh, the question is, what do you do with it, right? Because it's not the most comfortable thing to sit on, that type of thing. So we're trying to figure out the best methods for it, but uh, there is a thousand percent goal to incorporate the arch. Uh, as for electric vehicle charging, um, city did um, pass legislation a few years ago asking for the undergrounding of utilities um, adjacent to the park. Um, one of the reasons for that was to allow for the construction of electric vehicle charging stations uh, to increase the the load capacity. Um, so that's something that the city is looking at, uh, not as part of the park project, but sort of part of the overall vision um, on these um, on the streets in the area. Thanks, Nate. Uh, another question is uh, relating to you know maintenance. It's uh, with limited security. This is a very uh, enticing space for taggers to take over. Will the clean and uh, empty spaces have gra uh, graffiti sealer? So this is well, more of a. Um, I, I st hey, Steve, it's Daryl. I'll, I'll just I'll just start with the two things, I guess. Um, sorry, is um, I don't know if the graffiti sealer is a is um, a comment directed at the anti-graffiti coating that was sometimes put on things, particularly like mural and artwork in our parks. So just two general comments about um, the potential for tagging, like at any. Unfortunately, it, uh, like a lot of city parks, this is something that we do have to deal with on an ongoing basis. So it's a part of our ongoing routine. Uh, for maintenance and operation. Uh, we will be working closely with the Department of Public Works, particularly the Office of Community Beautification, as it pertains to the building uh, bridge structures that'll be in the park. So um, everything holding up the bridge will work with our Office of Community Beautification to make sure they address that graffiti. But any other graffiti or vandalism in the park uh, would fall under RAP's regular maintenance responsibilities. So we would uh, take care of that as we do at all of our normal parks. And uh, acknowledge, of course, that resources uh, will always be a challenge, but of course, uh, we will address graffiti uh, in a timely fashion. Thanks, Daryl. Uh, another question is, it will, be the, will there be outlets for charging stations for phones, laptops, and tables? The, the park project as it's currently designed right now, um, we, we, we currently don't have that implemented. Um, not sure if, if, if uh, this is something that I need to talk to Rec and Parks about, if, if, if this is a feature that they want to have. But as it stands right now, our design doesn't have that. Okay. Uh, thank you. Will there be security cameras and who will be managing them? Okay, so the, the part project, I'll, I'll speak in terms of implementing. Um, the, the part project we are uh, we are going to add all the conduits uh, necessary uh, for future wiring for security cameras. Thank you. Uh, regarding the arts components, how do we ensure that the art is reflective of all of the diverse culture of Boyle Heights? For example, the Japanese, Jewish, Togva, and uh, African American communities. So I think that when it comes to the public art, um, the, the process around how we, um, first, there's a few things. One, you have to figure out what type of art mediums you want. You meaning the community, right? 
is this something where people want murals, they want tiles, they want um, you know, I don't know, sculpture art or something like that. The second thing is um, when doing any public art in terms of the capital improvements, you have to develop a scope of work to engage um, potential artists based upon whatever art medium you do, right? So if you're putting out an RFP, you don't want to say, hey, you know, you, you want to be a little more specific to get artists that are interested in that specific field to respond to it, right? So um, when the city um, will do any RFP regarding public art, um, that's written essentially in conjunction with the community. So for example, um, there was one done in El Sereno where the community wanted something that was gonna reflect the culture and heritage of El Sereno, right? For the Alhambra art wall. So what, the, what was done is when cultural affairs put that together, they put basically word for word what the community said at the, at the meetings into the RFP for the artists. Now, in terms of artist selection, community members sit on the panel who selects the artists, right? So it's not something the city does in a vacuum and says, oh, we're, you know, we're gonna do whatever we want. So, um, but I think that the most key thing is developing the scope of work for the artists. So you get proposals back that reflects what the community wants, right? If you only say, you know, if you say, okay, we only want, you know, we're interested in murals, then all you're gonna get back is murals, right? If you say you want something different, or something broader, you will get more, more elements back. But um, this is gonna be an ongoing conversation. Obviously, if we get the funding, um, we have every intent to have meetings to develop the scope of work for, uh, for any potential artists that would include, you know, really diving in detail into potential mediums of art, as well as the, um, uh, what's the club? Um, as well as the, um, you know, the content of what that art should be. Thanks, Nate. I don't see any more questions. Yumi, do we have any on Facebook Live? We do not have any questions on Facebook. Okay. So at this point, I'd like to open it up to public comment. Uh, you can you know, comment uh, for a minute um, if you wish. And all you have to do is raise your hands and we'll, you know, Yumi will give you um, access to our speaker. Okay, we'll wait for a few more seconds to see if anybody is interested in offering any comment. So as we wait, I wanna also let you know that we have a survey um, link in the chat box. And um, this survey is to let you know let you have the opportunity to tell us how we're doing and also uh, offer any additional uh, feedback that you have on this project. And so, this essentially was the this the sixth and last meeting of the this meeting series um, as part of the Prop sixty eight application. Uh, our deadline is March twelfth, and so we we will work very hard with uh, CD fourteen. Uh, to put together this application and uh, incorporate you know, the, the feedback that we have received. And at this point, I'd like to um, invite Nate back for a, a closing remark. Nate? Yes, thank you so much, Stephen. Um, so thank you all so much for coming tonight. We really appreciate your presence, uh, willing to come participate in the community process. Um, we're very hopeful that we do get this funding. That way we can deliver a park that is transformative for the community of Boyle Heights, as well as uh, for the Arts District on the west side of the river. Um, we encourage you all to please stay engaged, um, please stay informed, ask questions. Um, we will obviously let you all know um, as soon as we hear from the state um, on um, whether or not we get the funding. And thank you, I really wanna thank um, uh, Department of Recreation and Parks, um, Stephen for doing all these meetings, Yumi, uh, Daryl, Bill, Craig, uh, for all your work, as well as um, uh, Gary, um, for your work with the Bureau of Engineering um, and our translation team. So uh, thank you all so much, and thank you, Stephen. Thank you, Nate. So this was our, our last meeting, and so thank you very much for having joined us in the you know the last six meetings. And uh, as always, we appreciate your comments and your attendance. 
And on behalf of Reckon Parks, Bureau of Engineering, CD14, uh, the Boyle Heights Neighborhood Council, as well as our partners at Cedar sinai we um, wish you a, a wonderful rest of the evening. Thank you. Have a good...